there's been some very big changes occur policy wise. Uh, it was evident before the current government was elected to office, so it's not a political thing. Uh, I think both sides now recognise the value of data. But uh, yeah, in the last two years, there's been a, a recognition that data is a very valuable resource and that it will uh, assist with two things. One is improved policy making, even though there's yet to be um, progress made on that f with that issue. And the other is that uh, can improve the delivery of services. And that is really the two major drivers now of how data will be used in the future. Well, there's a slow recognition. I emphasise slow because I don't think it's sunk in across the board yet. But those who are enriching their data with external data are reaping the benefits. They're getting better insights. Uh, they're seeing things that previously they didn't see. And uh, it's giving them far better information or, uh, say, um, evidence to support what they do. And so enriching data now is the name of the game. I've been involved in some of these projects. I've been absolutely amazed by what we're finding, which previously we just didn't have any inkling of. Everyone treats data seriously. Now, I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't name an organisation that doesn't, but the actual, uh, say, the uh, uh, financial value of data, I don't think anyone has really sat down and given that serious uh, thought. But I would wager, knowing what's in data, and how it can be used that, you know, we've got a priceless asset. Uh, you know, putting a dollar value on it is probably uh, uh, going to be difficult because I think that what the ultimate value will be is something that's beyond people's uh, imagination. We've already got some precedent there that uh, local councils have put dollar values on their data and they have been uh, selling it, uh, you know, like uh, geospatial data, which is a very sought after resource. Uh, so yeah, it could be interesting what develops there. Putting data in one location rather than having it in multiple locations is the way the industry is going and that's another major driver of you know, having a centralised uh, repository and you know, obviously with um, adequate backup and security as well being part of it. You need people who have got good intelligence, good understanding, good knowledge of where data is that you want is uh, located and that sounds simple in theory but in practice believe you me it's far, far from simple because the world is drowning in data and there's you know I don't know how you could quanti I mean quantify the, all, the uh, alternative sources that you can go to I mean the number is huge so uh, knowing where the data is, is located now is really going to be a, a very important issue you can't do that simply with machines you, you still need you know, the um, Mark I computer, which is the human brain. We focus on the data scientist, you know, which is definitely a critical requirement. There is a worldwide shortage of people who can do data science. There's no argument there. But what people forget is that we need other skills as well, and those other skills probably is just as important, if not more important, than the data science. And the one I use is um, the, what I call the data ninjas. Uh, they're also called informaticians and data analysts. You know, these are the different buzzwords that are used for them. These are people who are simply skilled in extracting data, cleaning it, preparing it for whatever use it's going to be used for. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, skill sets required to be just a data ninja, they are going up too in a number of notches in the sense that there's no longer an SQL person who's very good at doing SQL type work. They're becoming, they've got to be much more skilled than that. Uh, they've really got to understand data, what it, where it is, what it's used for, what it can do. And, and so we need people who are very skilled in that area. Now, data scientists have some of that knowledge, but not all of it.